This lecture will discuss the differences between the grand jury and the pettit jury. In the state of New Jersey, as well as many other states in the Union, there is a system known as the grand jury. The grand jury is a body of jurors. In New Jersey, it's 23 jurors, and they are the formal charging body for a criminal defendant. The way it works is once a defendant is arrested and charged with a crime, typically on a document known as a warrant, and that's usually done by the police, uh, after that warrant enters into the system of the criminal courts, the defendant then has a right to have his matter presented to the grand jury, where that body of 23 people will hear the evidence at the discretion of the prosecutor. The prosecutor will present witnesses or other evidence at his or her discretion, and then the grand jury will be able to ask questions of the witnesses uh, regarding the crime. If the grand jury feels that based upon the prosecutor's presentation, there is enough evidence for the case to go to trial, the grand jury will return what's called a bill, or will vote to bill the case. Then the formal document that's returned by the grand jury that officially charges the defendant with the crime is called the indictment. Some states, especially states in the uh, south, the southern parts of the United States, charge criminal defendants by another method known as an information. You do not need to know about the particulars of an information for the purposes of this class. It's important to know that at the grand jury, the evidence that's presented is only presented by the prosecutor. The rules of evidence are relaxed, things like hearsay are allowed, and the defendant has no right to be present. If the prosecutor wishes, he or she may invite the defendant to be present to be questioned by the prosecutor, but that's usually a rare scenario. Again, the grand jury, the members of the grand jury, upon hearing the evidence, can ask questions about the facts from the witness that's being presented, or questions about the law of the prosecutor. And again, if the grand jury thinks that there's enough evidence to proceed to trial in the matter, they build the case and return an indictment. If the grand jury feels that there is not enough evidence for the case to proceed to trial, they vote to no bill the case, and that ends the proceedings right then and there. Also, it's possible, and they may be instructed by the prosecutor, that if they feel that there is sufficient evidence to warrant some lesser crime, the grand jury may vote to remand the case back down to municipal court. You remember in the lecture regarding the structure of the state court system in New Jersey, the municipal court is the court of lowest jurisdiction, and here's criminal matters that are disorderly persons offenses or petty disorderly persons offenses. So if, for instance, a prosecutor is asking the grand jury to consider a crime where the defendant is charged with terroristic threats, for instance, and the grand jury believes that there were some uh, threatening statements made by the defendant, but did not, that, that did not quite arise to the level of terroristic threats as described in the statute, they may feel it is more appropriate to have the matter heard as a what's called a lesser included offense, and typically that offense might be the petty disorderly person's offense of harassment, and then vote to remand the case to the municipal court. It's important to note that the grand jury does not decide guilt or innocence. That is the function of the pettit jury, which we'll discuss in a moment. Additionally, it is not necessary that there be a unanimous vote among the members of the grand jury as to whether or not to bill a case. You merely need a majority vote for a bill, and that could carry the return of the indictment. Once the grand jury votes to bill the case and return an indictment, the indictment is docketed in the criminal uh, court system, and then the next meaningful court event for that particular defendant will be the arraignment, which is usually about four to six weeks after the grand jury returns the indictment. Next, let's discuss the function of the pettit jury. The most startling difference between the pettit jury and the grand jury, obviously, is its size. 
The pettit jury is the jury that hears the actual trial, whether it's in civil court or in the criminal court of the superior court. As I stated in the lecture on the structure of the New Jersey state courts, the size of the pettit jury in the criminal court is always a deliberating jury of 12. And in the civil courts, it can be as little as six pettit jurors and sometimes 12 jurors. In the civil courts, you recall, the verdict need merely be by a majority vote. So that if it's a sitting jury of pettit jury of, say, six jurors, and five of them vote that the plaintiff have, has proved his or her cause of action, then the plaintiff will win the case. In the criminal courts, however, the pettit jury is always comprised of 12 deliberating jurors, and the verdict must be unanimous. Again, a stark difference, difference between the grand jury and the pettit jury is, unlike the grand jury, the pettit jury determines guilt or innocence at a criminal trial. And again, there must be a unanimous verdict of all 12 jurors before a verdict can be returned. Oftentimes, the number of jurors that hear the case is 14 jurors. And that's so if a juror gets sick or has to leave the proceedings uh, in the middle of the case, you, still, you will still have 12 deliberating jurors. There must always be 12 deliberating jurors, and again, the verdict must be unanimous. And the verdict that can be returned is either guilty or not guilty. If the pettit jury cannot decide upon a verdict, for instance, if after a number of days of deliberating, they cannot agree one way or the other as to whether the defendant should be found guilty or not guilty, say it's 10 in favor of not guilty, and two jurors in favor of guilty, they can tell the judge that they are uh, have reached an impasse, they're hopelessly deadlocked, they are what's considered a hung jury, and then the judge declares a mistrial. But again, the differences to remember about the grand jury and the pettit jury are, number one, the size of the two juries, The grand jury is made up of 23 members, while the pettit jury is made up of 12 deliberating jurors. Number two, the vote. At the grand jury, the grand jurors just need a majority vote to return a bill, whereas the pettit jury needs a unanimous vote to return a verdict. And finally, the pettit jury does not determine guilt or innocence of a particular defendant. They merely determine whether or not there is enough evidence to, for the case to proceed to trial, and the pettit jury does determine guilt or innocence of the defendant.